And we're back. All right, here we go. Uh, so if, if you're watching along, uh, if you're watching the video, let me kind of explain where we're headed over the next couple of days. I think this is really important. You guys want to listen up in class as well. All right, so um, today uh, we are not learning any new notes today. Okay, uh, We are not having any new notes today. Tomorrow, what's going to happen tomorrow? Everybody needs to bring their computers with your laptop tomorrow. Computers with your chargers tomorrow. Uh, make sure your computer's charged up. Um, remember way back in the fall, we took uh, a quarterly checkpoint number one. Well, that was at the end of the first nine weeks. Tomorrow, we have quarterly checkpoint number two. Um, it's honestly, it's nothing to worry about. It's nothing to freak out about. It's, it's not that much work. Um, honestly, all it does, it, it gives me really good data on how you guys are progressing um, going toward our state test coming up in uh, the spring. So um, I, we're not exactly sure how that's going to tie into your grade. We didn't use it as a grade in the first nine weeks. We're probably going to do something where we kind of combine them all because we're going to take quarterly checkpoint number one at the end of the first nine weeks. We did that one. Quarterly checkpoint number two, which is tomorrow at the end of the second nine weeks. And then we will take quarterly checkpoint number three at the end of the third nine weeks. We will not do a fourth one because we will have already taken our state test by that time. Uh, and that's what this is used for. This is all gathering data on how you guys are progressing toward where we need you to, where we need you to get to before the state test. So we're probably going to do something where we're going to average them and like make them a grade somehow within the grade book, probably after we take the third one. Um, but again, all that is for us, it gives us good data on where we are at in terms of uh, where do we, you know, what did, what did we learn, what did we not learn, what do I need to review again before we take our state test. So we have final exams and state tests? That's what I was about to ask. Yeah, yeah. For you guys, I know. So let me, let me, talk, let me talk about it a little bit. Um, for you guys, uh, there are, every class that you have a state test in, you also have a final exam in. Um, Every class will have a final exam or a final project of some sort. You know, uh, we have to give you some sort of exam grade. Every high school class has to give you some sort of an exam grade, um, whether that be like a concert for choir or whether that be an actual exam for my class or whether that be a project or something that you take that you do in Spanish or whatever. I don't know. Um, I'm just making that stuff up. So basically, every class needs to have an exam grade. Um, I would love to exempt you guys from taking an exam. Uh, because you took the state test, but I need to give you a grade of some sort. We don't get your scores back for your state test until the fall. So there's no way I could use the score from your state test as part of your exam grade. So that's why you still have to take your exam. So yes, you do have exams and that you, have, you do have state tests and then exams. Your state test, we will be taking within April and then a little bit in May. I think that like some of them are in May. I'm not exactly sure which tests you guys have. I know you guys take the out for one test. Um, but I'm not exactly sure. English, science, what else? Okay. Um, once you take your state test in April and May, and then our final exam, like our final exam will be the last day of school. Right? That, the, the final exams are the last two days of school. Just like we had the semester exams, the last days of Christmas break, right before Christmas break, it's the exact same schedule. We'll take our eighth period exam on that third to last day, and then we'll, it'll be that block scheduled days for the last couple of days of school. Yeah, Sid. Um, so since like the second nine weeks is end until like tomorrow, like all the grades that like we've been doing since we got back today, like still count to the second nine weeks. Technically, our second nine weeks ended the last day before break. Because I was like the class. Yeah, the, the grades are like finished. Yeah, our, our grades were technically due to the office yesterday. Yeah. Um, we, we just didn't want to give you this quarterly checkpoint on the first day back, so that's why we put it on a Friday rather than on a Monday. Yeah. Does the state test go into like a grade book or some form of... The state time? test goes towards your graduation requirement. So you Basically, what happens is you're going to take a, a wide variety of state tests throughout all subjects. Yeah. You're going to get a score out of five for all of your state tests, like a three out of five, four out of five, five out of whatever it may be. OK, um, you have to accumulate so many points to graduate and then you have to accumulate so many points in math or right? accumulate so many points in English, accumulate so many points in social studies. OK, 
And then you have to have a grand total of points as well. So when you finish, does it tell you if you what you get out of five? We don't get that score out until oh, fall. That's, that's, okay. Yeah. So next week. Um, so it it kind of depends on, you know, I think they have to hand grade a lot of that stuff. But so yeah, we don't get your scores back. Oh wow. All right. Yeah. But I I believe actually I think you guys get your scores before we get your scores. Like you get you get them mailed to you from the state. In like the summer. In the summertime. Yeah. Like like July. It's, just, yeah. it's the same. It's the same type of test as like your eighth grade test. Like the maps yeah. stuff and stuff. Uh, it's not maps, but it's it's similar. Yeah. Right. yeah. It's just the last year we do state. No, you take state tests all the way up until your junior. Actually, you take you take the most state tests as a sophomore, because I know as a sophomore you take geometry, biology, U.S. history, and English. I think as a freshman, and don't quote me on this, I think as a freshman you take algebra and English. I think, but I, I'm not exactly sure. No, it's not boring. It's not, it's not that bad. Um, but as a sophomore, you take a lot. And then as a junior, I know you have to take government, and I think something else, but I'm not sure. Um, so are there any other questions on that? Okay, so quarterly checkpoint number two tomorrow. Bring your laptops with you and your chargers and your computers. Um, I don't have a charger, so I'm sure Oh, I've got that. Um, now, what does that mean? Now, normally, uh, you know, we've done, we've done these three sections, and after this, that's the end of the chapter. So we're not going to do anything else within chapter five. So what does that mean for tomorrow? Like, honestly, if I didn't have to give you the quarterly checkpoint tomorrow, you know what we'd be doing? We'd be taking a quiz over these three sections, five, four, five, six, and five, seven. Okay? So we'd be taking a quiz over these three sections tomorrow if I didn't have to give you the quarterly checkpoint. So we were like, well, do we do a Monday quiz? Do we review and then do a Monday quiz? Or do we review Monday and then do a Tuesday quiz? I feel like we've done a lot of this stuff over the past couple days. So what we decided to do, and, and hopefully to give you a little bit of a grade boost right at the beginning of this nine weeks, we're going to offer it as a take-home quiz. I'm actually going to give it to you tomorrow after you're done with the quarterly checkpoint. You can work on it the rest of the period after the quarterly checkpoint. You take it home over the weekend. You finish it up. You come in, beginning of class on Monday. You turn it into the box. And it is a 23-point summative grade. A 23-point summative grade. Um, the expectation is that you would uh, work alone on it. You can use your resources that are available to you, but the expectation is that you would work alone on it. Um, I'll know if you do not work alone on it and you get the answers wrong and you're like all getting the same wrong answers, then I'll know. Um, so just make sure that you're, you're, um, you're, work, you're, you're trying your best on it. Obviously, I'm going to be very picky about the work that needs to be shown. Make sure you show all the work and show everything that you need to show. That is over the weekend, and then you'll turn it in on Monday. And then we're going to start a new chapter on Monday. Same question? I probably shouldn't say it. No, then don't. Just don't. Um, are there any other questions on that? Okay. All right. Well, let's get started here. <laughs> um, let's go through this warm-up. I'm going to graph this system of inequalities here. Now, I still have, I mean, you guys were complaining to me that you were kind of confused on this stuff as I was walking around. Let me remind you that we've been, that graphing an inequality is really the same thing as graphing an equation with two exceptions. Do I dot or solid the line? And where do I shade? Right? That's the only new piece that we had in section 5.6. And then in section 5-7, what the new stuff was yesterday was just putting two of them on the same coordinate plane. So let's go through that process again. Look at the, the blue line here. What is the slope for the blue line? Somebody tell me. Negative 1. Negative 1. Right? Negative 1. And what is the y-intercept for the blue line? Oh, it looks like I'm going to get out of the popsicle sticks today. Hold on. Let me get out of the popsicle sticks. Where's second period? There it is. Uh, Luca. Uh, Noah, what's my B value? Thank you. Thank you, Noah. Did you say that, Tom? You kind of let sound the same, I guess. Uh, so my y-intercept is 1 and my slope is negative 1. Now, I go to graph, and I put my y-intercept is 1, and my slope is negative 1 being down 1, right 1. Down one, right one. Okay. Now, 
Let me ask you this. Do I make that line solid? Yes. Thank you, Gio. Yes, I do. I called Dalton anyway, so it's perfect. Um, I make that line solid. Gio, why do you say it's a solid line? Because it's uh, greater than or equal to. Or equal to. Good. It's, uh, it's or equal to. Now, do I shade above or below that line, Solomon? Below the line. Why do you say below the line? You're right. Good. Okay, this is a less than, so I shade below the line. So I'm going to go in here and shade down this way. Okay. Now, I shade the second line the exact same way as I shade the first line. Or, I'm sorry, shade. Uh, graph it. I end up shading the same thing. And now I say y is less than or equal to 5x minus 2. All right, so what's the slope? Grace, what's the slope? And what's the y-intercept? Good. So, I could answer this. Hold on a second. Let's graph it now. Y-intercept of negative 2, and then I use my slope of 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1, over 1, down 5, left 1. And solid or dotted line? Solid line. Solid line. And which direction do I shade? What'd you say? Below. Below again. Good. And now I'm going to take my other highlighter and shade below the line. Okay. Questions about that? Now. Remember that the solution region is the overlapping region. So in my case here, the green region, any solution would come out of the green region in there. Okay. Let's answer uh, so many questions, whatever questions we have on the, on the homework. Let's start with one through nine. Let's start with one through nine. Are there any questions one through nine? Yeah. Let's go over number nine. Yeah. Oh, I meant one through seven. I'm oh, sorry. Wow. We'll we'll go through number nine. I'm just talking about the yes or no ones. Oh, okay. Are there any questions on the yes or no ones? One, three, five, or seven? Okay. Well, then let's let's go through number nine then, because this is where we start uh, graphing. We need to get this like that out. Over a graph. <laughs> okay. So let's graph number nine. Now, number nine is a little bit of a tricky one because I have that y is greater than negative three. What type of line is a y is greater than negative three? Horizontal, Horizontal at negative three. And it's a dotted line at negative three, right? Because there's no or equal to there. Um, now, can I show you something? Everybody look up at the board real quick. I had a student a couple of years ago say, well, what if I didn't shade both regions? What if I did this, greater than negative three? Can I put little arrows on the line and the direction I would shade, and then in the end only shade the overlapping region? Yeah, that's fine. That's totally fine. Like watch what I'm gonna do now. So that was my blue line, this is my red line. Uh, be careful here, is this another horizontal line? No, it's got the X in it, so it's not horizontal. This is a diagonal. What's the y-intercept? Zero. Go through zero, zero. With a slope of five. Or down five, left one. Solid line in this case. And now in this one, I would shade above, right? Shade above the line. So in this case, I'm shading over here. Do you see where the arrows are overlapping? Do you see how it would only be this portion in here? So what you could do here is just highlight that portion. That's fine. Because as I was walking around looking at your homework, I was seeing that a lot of you are getting a little messy with your graphs. Well, some of you aren't using graph paper, but, but mainly the shading Somebody's 9 o'clock alarm is going on. Um, mainly because you're just scribbling for your shading regions and you can't really tell where the overlapping ones are. In this case, it's really clear what is the solution region. Oh, it's, it's that purple region. 
Now, you're going to see me graph both the both regions and, and really clearly define what the overlapping one is. Does that answer your question on number nine? Yes, thank you. Um, let's do one more. Uh, 11, 13, or 15. What do we want to do? Let's do one more. 15. 15. Okay, let's take a look at 15. Uh, you know what? I'm going to clear that. Perfect. Let's take a look at 15 here. Now, for 15, are either of them set equal to Y? Bummer. <coughs> that requires me to do some work. So I've got X plus Y is greater than 1. Well, the nice thing is, is I, all I have to do is just subtract the X for this first one. So that's my first blue equation. Let's take a look at the red equation while we're at it. Uh, negative X minus Y is less than negative 3. All right, so I'm going to add the X, which gets us a negative Y is less than X minus 3. And then I divide by negative 1. Now, be careful here. When I divide by negative 1, what happens to the symbol? It must flip the symbol. So Y is now greater than negative X plus 3. Okay? Y is greater than negative X plus 3. So those are my two inequalities. Let me pull down my graph here. And I'll take the blue line, negative X plus 1. Y intercept of positive 1, slope of a negative 1. Down one, right one. And this is a dotted line. I'll just do this then. There we go. And I'm going to shade above that line. Shade above that line. Up here. Okay. Now, coincidentally enough, or maybe not so coincidentally, um, the slopes for the second line is actually the same as the slope of the first line. In this case, the y-intercept is just a little different. It's a positive 3 instead of positive 1. Same thing, though, uh, dotted line. And I shade above this line again. Now, watch what happens when I shade above. Keep doing that. Uh, when I graph this one, it's actually all of my yellow region is going to turn green, isn't it? So all of that is a solution. Everything above that red dotted line would be a solution. Questions on that one? Okay. Uh, any other questions on any part of the homework? No? All right. So here's what we're going to do today. Um, I am going to give you... A review assignment that we're going to do together in class. Whatever we don't finish in class together, you'll have to do for homework tonight. First period, I got everything done with five minutes to spare. Okay? But we didn't go on that discussion about state tests and whatnot. Yeah, All right. So like always with any sort of uh, practice quiz or practice or review assignment, um, this is going to look very similar to the, uh, the summative assignment I give you. Um, uh, I give you tomorrow. Now, again, know that that take home quiz is going to be um, not as big as a normal quiz. A normal quiz is 40 to 50 points. Uh, the the take-home quiz is like 25 or so, okay? So it's not as big as a normal quiz would be. Uh, but hopefully, it's a it's a little bit of a grade boost right at the very beginning of this nine weeks. Hopefully, it uh, starts you guys out strong. Don't just not do it. That is very bad. It's a zero out of 25, and then you know it's 23, 23, 25, something like that. Uh, somewhere around 23, 25. Uh, solve the system of equations using elimination or substitution. All right, so let's take a look at this negative uh, 4x plus 12y, negative 18, minus 6y is equal to 9. Now, is this inequalities? No, these are equations, aren't they? Right? This is back to section 5.4. It's what we did the first day back. What's unique about this is that it's a special case. Look, elimination is going to be best here, right? 
I'm going to use elimination. I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by 2. And watch what's going to happen. Negative 4x plus 12y is equal to negative 18. That does not change in the top. The bottom will become positive 4x minus 12y, positive 18. And what happens to everything? Everything cancels. My x is canceled. My y is canceled to get a 0. My eight, negative 18 plus 18 also gets a 0. Now, what does that tell me about my solution? Unlimited? All real numbers. All real numbers. Infinite solutions. Unlimited. Unlimited. Unlimited solutions. All you can eat. Um, we could either use the symbol or infinite, infinite solutions. Okay? Um, it doesn't matter. Either way is fine. Okay? Infinite solutions are all real numbers. I really don't care which one you use. Okay? Questions about that? The reason it's not a no solution is because, well, somebody tell me, how, what would it look like if it was a no solutions? What would it look like, Brown? Good. Yeah, I would get like a false statement. It would be like zero is equal to 18 or something like that. Right? That would be a no solution. Okay. All right, let's take a look here. Uh, tell whether this is a solution. So how do I tell whether if something is a solution or not? What do I have to do to it? Yeah, let's plug it in. Now, I only have one inequality here. This is back to section 5, 6. Uh, this is just one single inequality. But let's plug it in. 2 times negative 3 plus 4 less than or equal to negative 1. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 plus 4. Negative 6 plus 4 is a negative 2. Okay, is negative 2 less than or equal to negative 1? Yes, negative 2 is less than negative 1. So therefore, this is a solution. You say, yes, this is a solution. Let me remind you, I will be very particular. I need to see all of that work. Don't skip steps. Don't just not do work. If you wrote a yes on the answer blank with no work, I give you zero points for it. Uh, for that one, I put it on the graph that was like on the question below. Is that okay? Um, no, show it as plugging it in. Because you will use the graph for the next question. You know what I mean? All right, let's take a look at number three. Y is less than or equal to one half x plus one. Let me get a graph up here. Uh, let's do a six by six. Okay. Now, this is just one single inequality, right? It's just one single inequality. This is not a system like we've been working with over the past day or two. This is just one inequality. So I graph this like I would a line, and then I have to just pay attention to dotted or solid and then shading. Uh, Ella, what's the slope and the intercept? And then what? One. Good. So the slope is one half. The y-intercept is one. That means I go to my y-intercept, which is one, make a dot. And then I use my slope, rise one, run two. Positively sloping line. Down one, left two would be acceptable as well. And then let me ask uh, Henry, is this a dotted or solid line? Uh, solid. Good. And then Henry, which direction do I shade? Above or below this line? You were right. And we know that by because it's a less than symbol. Less than means shade below. That means any point that I am shading here, any solution within the blue region would be, any coordinate within the blue region would be a solution. So would 0, 0 be a solution here? Yes. Yeah. Would negative 1, comma, 6 be a solution? No. No. Wait, so Mr. Do you not remember my name or something? Yeah. Mr. So the, even if it's like on a line, like if you say 0, 1, that right. would be a solution. It would be a solution because this is a solid line. If this were a dotted line, then it would not be. Let's 
take a look here. Tell whether 5 comma negative 2 is the solution of the system. All right, so if I'm looking at a solution to the system, I want to see if, I, uh, it's, if it works for both of the inequalities. So let's plug it into the top. 3 times 5 plus 2 times negative 2 is less than 20. All I'm doing is plugging in x for x, y for y, and seeing if it works out for the top inequality. 3 times 5 plus 2 times negative 2. Let's see if that comes out to be less than 20. Well, this is 15 minus 4 is 11. So, Tommy, is that a solution? Uh, yes. yes, it is. Let's check the next one. Negative 2 greater than or equal to 5 minus 10. Well, 5 minus 10 is negative 5. Is that a solution? Is negative 2 less than, greater than or equal to, excuse me, greater than or equal to negative 5? Yeah. Negative 2 is a bigger number than negative 5. Like, think about it on a number line. Oh, I thought it was positive 5. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a negative 5. So this would check out as well. So we say, yes, it is a solution. And remember that if it doesn't meet the requirements just for one of them, then it's not a solution. Because this is um, meets the requirements of both, then it is a solution. Let's take a look at the next one. This is on the top of the back. Again, if you miss any part of this or you want to rewrite it, I'll be posting the video at the end of this period. No. I mean, you can bring them in. Write an inequality, represent the graph here. All right, so for these, uh, I'm going to kind of do these both simultaneously. I'm going to do these at the same time here. I'm going to first start off by writing them as y's. Here we go, y, 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 y. Now, do I shade above or below on this first one? Above. So what does that tell me about my symbol? It's greater than. Greater than. Do I have to add in the or equal to? No. No. Right. Let's take a look at number six here. Shaded above or below. What's that tell me about my symbol? Less than or equal to. Yeah. And because it's a solid, it's less than or equal to. Now, at this point, I go here and I look, oh, okay, my y-intercept's at 1. I mean, if you want to, go ahead and start doing that right away. Then leave a space for your slope. Same thing over here. The y-intercept is at negative 3, so maybe just do an x minus 3, leaving space for whatever your slope is going to be. Now let's find another nice point. Not there, not there, not there. Oh, looks like it's nice right there. I rise 3. I run 4. Three, four. Yeah. I don't know, like, how would you know to, like make like the the slope at that point it because be you're like, looking like you don't want to you don't want to choose here wherever the point because it's line. not it's not crossing nicely at a, a corner point you don't want to choose this one because it's not crossing nicely this one crosses nicely i can see right where it's at oh like right on the yeah, right on the line like, uh, yeah. like here let me show you what i mean here here's my y-intercept right mm -hmm. do you see how this is crossing nicely right on those lines mm -hmm. then i can use those points I could have also used that point because it crosses nicely on that one or that one, you know, because they're all crossing nicely. I should all get the same slope in between any of these points. It's all 2 over 1. Shh. No. So those are my two answers for 5 and 6. And let's do seven, and maybe we can pick up eight tomorrow. Uh, graph this system of inequalities. Oh, we're using 17. Yeah, we've got three minutes. We can do this. All right. So let me go ahead and graph my blue line here. My blue line has a slope of negative 3 halves, but a y-intercept of 2. So I make my dot my 2. Got past. 
And then my slope is negative 3 halves. Down 3, right 2. Or I go up 3, left 2. And this is a dotted line because it's not an or equal to. And I know that I am going to have to shade my below this line. And then I do my red line. Slope is 2, y intercept of negative 5. There's my negative 5 as my y intercept. And then I have my slope as positive 2. Remember, that's up 2, right 1. Got to miss my dot there. Uh, shh. Noah, stop talking. <laughs> And then I want to shade above that line. So I'll go in with my highlighter here. And anything that's going to turn green is a solution. Now, it's going to ask us for two examples that would be a solution and two examples that would not be a solution. So you just pick out some points. You say, okay, somewhere in there, there, those would be solutions. On the opposite side would not be solutions. That was not me talking. You both like have this low mumble. Okay, that was a little bit.